welcome back to our Sunland Benchmark 2024 with the theme Accelerating a Better South Africa. I'm your host, Uli Dila Ramashala, and we're joined in studio by an industry giant, Mr. Thiessen Vandia from PSG Employee Benefits within the Woodme branch. Thiessen, a warm welcome and thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Oli. I love that word giant because <laughs> I've got a broader demeanor rather than taller stature. So. <laughs> <laughs> much appreciated. Yeah, thank you very much for joining us, Deason. So, I mean, you heard some of the insights from uh, Nzwasho Niwa and Gogezo who yes. touched on, you know, how we at Sunlam really take um, educating our employees and members on financial confidence, right? Yes. Um, we really want to ensure that every member retires um, with that confidence and also becomes very healthy. So I'm just going to touch on two parts because it's quite topical in the industry. Absolutely. What do you think will be the primary benefits and challenges for your clients um, under the two-part system? You know, I have to admit, firstly, I hate that word two-part. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's been so overdone. Yeah. Uh, and every time I think of two-part, it brings me back to my high school memories of matric <laughs> and that Shakespeare play Macbeth, you know, with the witches over the pot. Eh? <laughs> Uh, so it really takes me back to those times. So, you know, for me, I think, um, you know, from, from understanding the South African context, and we've often seen members, you know, naively withdrawing in order to access their money. Mm. Right? Mm. So this will allow members to access a portion of their money, albeit a small portion. Yes. You know? So at least it's going to curb that trend of withdrawing to actually access money. You know? mm. And I think for me, from a long-term perspective, we can certainly understand that it's going to have a broader impact, yeah. you know, that compulsory saving element. Because yeah. that has always been one of the, I would think, the pet hates for me in the industry. Mm. When people move from job to job, they take that money and they never get to that ever elusive 70% 70, 70 net replacement ratio. That's so, true. so that's what we definitely see. From a challenge perspective, it's one thing to communicate but it's more important to educate. Mm. And it's, it's having that deep understanding and demystifying the two-part system. You know? There's a lot of items that's been put out there, and it's about creating the right narrative around the two-part system. That's so true. That's so true. I mean, you touched a bit on it, but what advice would you give to other brokers you know, around preparing for this uh, much-anticipated two-part, or shall I say three-part three -part system. system? I think for me, it's communicate, 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 mm. and have members understand. Mm? And also have them understand the impact of actually continuing to draw on this money. Because what's going to happen, inevitably, it's going to erode your end value. Mm. So the way we position it to our client, and it might seem simplistic to our members, but we're saying, rather view it as a loan, a loan against your fund. That's so true. So when you take out that money, think about how do you replace it, you know? And there's lots of tools within uh, replacing that money. And one of the, the most efficient, I'd like to think, is adding additional voluntary contributions. Mm. So deem it as a loan against your fund. Start contributing a little more because we know AVCs, firstly, it's a very efficient way to save and a very cost-effective way to save. Mm -hmm. So view it as a loan rather than viewing it as, um, you know, the be-all and end-all and continue drawing on that money. I like that. I like that, Sisson. Um, you know, it will certainly drive the right behavior when yes. members see it as a loan rather than a savings, Absolutely. savings pot. Now, Absolutely. touching on that, and I can see you're quite passionate about financial inclusion, right? Yes. What, what do you see the main barriers to achieving this financial inclusion for your clients? And more importantly, how can this be addressed? Yeah, you know, I think financial inclusion is so broad, mm -hmm. you know? If we think about when's your first introduction truly to the financial services sector, mm -hmm. it's when you open up a bank account, right? That's true. That's where it really starts. And if we look at how the banking sector has addressed unbanked members, you know, with introduction of zero fees, banks like Time Bank, Bank Zero, etc. And I'd like to see what our industry is going to do to address that. Mm. That for me would address the financial inclusion element because it crosses all, uh, you know, LSM levels within the country. So for me, it's how do we create greater products? You know, I listen to um, Mzwa and I listen to the other speakers talk about South African and savings culture. You know, we always get stigmatized with the fact that South Africans can't save. I like to, to, to change that. I think, you know, to quote Steve Jobs, people are inherently good, mm. you know? And if we're given the right tools, we'll be able to save. And if you think about the stock felt, uh, you know, these are people that live on the bread line but still have a deep-rooted savings culture. Mm. So how do we create tools and products to facilitate and enable that? Mm. So for me, that would encompass financial inclusion. It's about creating the right products to target the right segment to encourage that savings. I like that. So now when you have the products 
and you're educating your members, which is very imperative. Mm -hmm. How how do you then what what roles do brokers you know play in enabling this financial inclusion and financial literacy and ensuring that our members can then retire financially confident? You know, if I think about our practice and our ethos, um, you know, we believe everyone deserves access to financial mm. advice. That's the starting point of of how we run our business. So, you know, it's, it's great to talk to your management committee, it's great to talk to your CFOs, because they're all financially astute, financially literate. But we have a passion of driving our message right down to member level. Mm -hmm. And that's something we're very passionate about. And I think we have a simple core purpose in our practice. You know, we understand the South African context. We know most people only get any form of retirement savings, life cover, health care, to what employers give them. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a social responsibility that we need to enact to ensure that members are at every level looked after. So to simplify our philosophy is, you know, God forbid something happens to you, we need to make sure your family is looked after. And if you retire, we want you to retire with dignity. And we expect our partners to carry our ethos. So whoever we choose to partner, their products and services need to match our ethos. I love that. I love that. Social responsibility. Our social responsibility would be to educate our members to, to, to retire with. Dignity, yes. Dignity and financial confidence. I like that. I like that. Now, touching on health, we spoke about, and you heard various speakers in the, in the benchmark speaking around members looking for a holistic value proposition from employee benefits, group risk, and health, yes. right? So if we touch on health, how do you anticipate this, uh, the implementation of NHI? How will this impact your clients as well as their employees? Yeah. So I think, you know, firstly, let's talk about the spirit of the bull. Yeah. I like how Kamisa in, introduced that. We know we've got a country of inequality, right? Mm. So at the core of the bill, it really makes social sense. Everyone deserves access to healthcare, right? right. That, that's the core of the bill. So we start with that noble ideal. But like all noble ideals, if you don't have a plan to achieve it, it's going to fall flat. Mm. So I think therein lies the caveat. It's in terms of the planning to actually achieve the NHI bill. So the spirit of the bill is awesome. It's how do we bring it about. And you know, there's of course various factors. You know, it's the implementation phase. How's the phased approach? You, you know, the media, and I mean, the professionals have spoken on this, you know, uh, ad nauseum. You mm. know, we've heard all of the big houses come up and speak about it, and they're saying it will take decades to implement. Mm. So what is the immediate impact for our customers? For the now, there isn't any real immediate impact. Yeah. For the short term. In the long term, once they've got the plan and we start unpacking the plan. And also, we've got to think about collaboration between corporate, South Africa and the government. And I believe this NHI bill is going to force that. We've seen, and I think the most recent example of forced collaboration has to be have been COVID, right? Mm. When we had no choice oh, yes. but for government <laughs> mm -hmm. and the pub, for the public sector and the private sector to, to collaborate. Together. That's true. Uh, and how well did it work? Very. Yeah. Uh, We've seen the efficiency that can be yeah. created. In fact, I think South Africa was rated one of the best in terms of handling the COVID pandemic. Absolutely. Yeah. So for me, the bill is going to certainly force a collaboration. So if I have to say the biggest outcome I'm getting is that we're going to see public and private sectors working a lot closer together. I love that. I thoroughly enjoyed speaking to you, Thiessen. Same here. Um, I hope you join us next time. That was Thiessen Vandia from PSD Employee Benefits within the Woodmead branch. And like you said, and you heard it from the man, our CEO, Kanye Samkiza, said, everyone deserves access to health care.